welcome back. Part one, awakenings, early encounters that influenced change from childhood in County Antrim to living in Kent and Sri Lanka in the 1980s. From the Botanical Gardens in Belfast. <laughs> Crumlin is the name of the village I grew up in. It is situated in the south of County Antrim in the Loch Ney Basin, the loch being a couple of miles away to the east. The excerpts I'm going to read from chapter two called Impressionable Years, Corn Crakes and Curlews include Time at Ballydown Fine, Four Score and Crumlin. Nearing the end of my primary school years when I was aged 11, my parents would encourage me to enjoy spring field trips. This is where I would experience solitude doing a circular walk down Cider Court Road, along by Tom Hen Tots, as it was colloquially known, and back up the Lurgan Road, with stunning views over Rams Island in Loch Ney, the largest freshwater loch in the UK and Ireland. I must have been acquiring my own skills of early nest detection as a photograph from that era of a blackbird sitting on the nest proves, albeit well concealed. Come on. We moved from the big village of Crumlin to the city of Belfast, 14 miles away to the east. The family homestead of Ballydown Fine was nestled in the lee of the Black Mountain just below the road. These few acres included gardens, an orchard, hen run, duck pond and a daffodil field for the family to enjoy including dogs. Many memories were made from my grandparents era. To my parents era. Through to my generation. There were corn crakes in the adjacent hay fields that previous generations would have heard. I even heard them myself in the 1960s, as confirmed by the BTO's Breeding Bird Atlas. 1968 to 1972, they were, were recorded as abundant and widespread. Now they are confined to a small number of coastal and island strongholds, like Rathlin, where I visit next. There are no easy answers to these complex challenges in conservation with having to feed an increasing population of people. By the time this photo was taken, the corn creeks were are long gone, probably due to the increasingly intensive agriculture. For example, early cut silage combined with the mechanization of meadow mowing are thought to be the main factors of the corn creeks decline. If you look closely, you can actually see the plastic wrapped silage bales in the adjacent farm. The last occupier of the dwelling was an ant and on her demise, the small holding was sold and needed demolishing, which happened circa 2010. This ant, to whom my book is in part dedicated, was known for her wise sayings and quick wit. I always remember her saying, in reference to a previous family property further up the mountain road, that though it was physically not there, she could revisit it in her mind any time she wanted. How true. Other farmsteads in the area are also going through similar transitions. It is painful to observe the developers encroaching up to the boundary on the right. They may be just waiting for some heavy equipment to uproot the many wonderful trees left from Ballydown Fine. I live in faith and hope that a small nature reserve could be kept for the new incumbents of the bigger housing complex. From this small beginning, family have moved all over the world, and for me, I settled in the southeast of England. The stories now continue through the next generations. That's all for now. Hope this has wh whetted your appetite to read the book, details at the end. Remember, the more you're out, the more you see. Goodbye.
Jumping in the water. And that one, see that one? 